space. The final frontier push. These are the voyages of Richards. On mission two, discover hazardous new planets. To contact psychotic civilizations. To boldly eliminate your crew like no other captain has done before. Bush. 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 To win red shirts. He must be. <coughs> Excuse me. To win red shirts, he must be the first captain to eliminate all your red shirts on your away team. In a two-player game, you start with five red shirts. In a three-player game, you start with four red shirts. And with four more players, you start with three red shirts each. Most red shirts at least have one skill. There is diplomacy, tactical, engineering, science, infiltration, medical, and some have multiple skills. And of course, the Will Wheaton card has every skill in the game, apparently including the ability to post on Facebook what beer is drinking at the moment. Oops, sorry, that's not the Will Wheaton card. That's the Kessley Washer card. And then there are four types of Captain's Logs cards. There's the mission cards, the event cards, location cards, and the equipment cards. Missions also have skill icons on them. The green skill icons on the left are mission requirements for a successful mission. And if there are any red icons on the right, those are the prerequisite skills the red shirt needs to even tap the mission in the first place. On the bottom of the card, it shows the results if you succeed or fail the mission. Of course, you're trying to fail. Location cards are played on the away team and last until it's replaced by a new location card. Many location cards will give or take away skills, but others will have other effects, such as the plan of the beautiful utopian in no way suspicious win, where you lose one male retro at the end of every turn. And with event cards, something unexpected happens during a mission, and they could usually be played at any time, and usually last until the end of the turn. Finally, equipment cards give your red shirt skills. They may be played by you, or your opponent may play them on your red shirts. During your turn, you first unzap. A card that's been zapped has simply been turned sideways from being used on a previous turn. There are other card games, they just call this tapping. And then you can play cards. You can play mission cards on any player, including yourself, that doesn't already have a mission. You then choose which red shirt you want to go on the mission. You zap it, or turn it sideways. So let's say Lieutenant Tiberius is attempting to defend the truce zone from the Clang on. Tiberius has a tactical skill, so he fulfills the prerequisite for the mission. But to be successful, he also needs a diplomacy skill, which he doesn't have. So if no other cards are played, he fails gloriously. But wait, another player just played the Universal Translator on him. He just might accomplish the mission with his newfound diplomacy skill. But then Tiberius discovers a bird combat base and he and the entire away team lose any diplomacy skill they may have. So he fails after all and for failing mission he of course dies but Tiberius is a show off apparently. So when Tiberius dies he takes another red shirt with him with his choice. But on this mission any other player that used a card on you this turn also loses one red shirt. If the mission was a success they would have drawn two cards. The first player to run out of all their red shirts is the winner. Fans of Star Trek and people that play the game Munchkin will get a kick out of this one. But now You've been watching the Gamers Grind Show. The Gamers Grind is located at 6326 Main Avenue in Orangevale, California. Be sure to like us on Facebook, visit our website, and of course come on down and play some games off the wall.